Hey guys, the objective of this video is to find the UDL along grid line 1 for case 1.2G and 1.2G plus 1.5Q and G plus Psi EQ. Okay, so here's our problem. Now I've changed it up. If you've been watching the previous topic, we had a, um, a, a structure like this, a slab like this, but it was continuous there. We sort of had a square there. I've now made it into a triangle. So I've just changed it up a bit. Um, you'll see why I've done that. In the later videos, it makes it a bit more complex. And um, we're just going to see how that impacts it all the properties on the side here. And we need to be looking at, so we want to find the equivalent UDL along grid line two. So that's the first thing we need to be doing. So here's grid line two. So if you were to take a section through this grid line, you would get a T beam. All right, we have the slab, um, either side of the beam, and then the beam itself. So the slab and the beam, so we're gonna get a T beam. And I'm gonna say that all the columns are 500 by 500. All the columns are at intersections of beams. So there, 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 there. There, 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 and there, 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 okay? And those columns are 500 by 500. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is just find the effective width, which is BW plus 0.2A, uh, where A is 0.7L for a continuous beam. So solving this, it's 450 plus 0.2 outside of 0.7 times by the span. We're looking at the longer span, so 10 meters, so 10,000 mils we get 1850 millimeters for our effective width. So as I said, we're gonna be looking at the UDL along grid line two. Now we're gonna be doing 1.2G plus 1.5Q first. Now what we do is, is we split it up into the floor loading and the beam loading, okay? So there's a specific loading from the floor, from the slab, and there's a self weight of the beam. So we have to look at those two components. For the slab loading, we need to look at how this slab load distributes from the slab into the beams. So for example, if you look at this one in the corner here, this eight by eight, it is a square, which means that the loading is gonna distribute from the slab to the beams in triangles, okay? Because it's a square. So we're gonna get that loading onto grid line two from that slab. This slab over here, now it's a rectangle. What's gonna happen is, is that it's gonna form a triangle like this. And every...